Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dwyer, and it is now October, which means if you are a busy person, the chances are then there's a whole month or two of Go News and awesome stuff that maybe you kind of aren't aware of. I thought we would go and catch you up on some of the more interesting things that have been going on in the Go community. I think we're going to lead off with one of the largest stories of the day, and I think that is going to be courtesy of W. Baduk. If you're like me, you like playing on as many different servers as possible, that way you get to actually absorb as many different styles as possible, like get to play against a lot of different players, game never really gets stale that way. And if that is true, then you may have noticed that there is a little thing currently going on with W. Baduk. If you go to the website, you will realize it's not there anymore. Now, the Cyber Aura website that is in Korean is still there, but it seems the W. Baduk one, which was, you know, for, I guess, us English speakers, not quite there. Now, for some people, some people have even gone far enough to say that their client isn't working anymore. I tested it out. I got, to, I got W. Baduk to load up just fine. However, there are noticeable problems. For example, the web page that they usually load you to, or like off the side, give you the latest news and what have you, that is clearly not there because the site it is pointing to doesn't exist anymore. Now, given that the English client is still working, I guess that means that they just let their domain expire, but this has actually been going on for quite a few days now, so I'm surprised the issue hasn't been resolved unless maybe they lost the files on along with the domain and then that's a bigger problem but that would be very very surprising they didn't have a backup if that was the case so if your wb uh, client crashes when you try to log on with it you know that's probably the reason if you notice something's a little bit odd yes the website is gone and that is affecting a few things i just hope that it's back up and running and everything's nice and smooth. I'm also going to go further to say hopefully maybe while they're updating things, maybe they can give a few updates to the English client. That'd be great. Anyone who's ever actually tried to log on with the English client knows that there's a little bit of a dance you have to go through in order to be able to actually select a room and get in it, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. Though if anyone has any more information about it, like this was intentional or whatever, feel free to drop comments down below. I'm curious to see uh, how this is going along and when this is expected to be going back up, if it's going to be back up and all that good sort of stuff. And speaking of things that are back up and operational, hey, Lee has begun releasing videos again, or at least I say video again. Everyone's been dying for her return, seem as she, seems that she is back. And on top of her returning, it looks like we also have a notable streamer, XHU98, who has also returned from his five month, I want to say, hiatus. He streams every Friday, or at least he tries to stream every Friday now, in which he has his Fridays with XHU98. He plays games, has some lectures, if you haven't checked out him before, maybe you want to check him out now. Links, of course, to both those channels will be in the description down below. So glad to have both of them back making content. More content creators the merrier. I also noticed that the other day there was a big discussion on Reddit over Crazy Stone's rank. Those of you who don't know, Crazy Stone is a program that you can buy and download on Steam to play Go against wherever you can get it to run. Of course, people then would begin wanting to know, you know, what does Crazy Stone's rank actually correlate to on other various servers, yada yada yada. I kind of have many different opinions about this one. I use Crazy Stone a lot in my teaching in that I like being able to have a, an opponent always ready for a student. That way we can talk about their moves against said opponent without really worrying about hurting the opponent's feelings or the fact that we're blatantly cheating and all that kind of good stuff. We can go over why the student is thinking, what they're thinking, when they're thinking, how they're thinking it, and how they're going about executing whatever it is that they are thinking. It's been very, very useful. It's been a wonderful tool having Crazy Stone there. Unfortunately, it also means that I've had an opportunity to see it in action versus a lot of different ranks of play, all the way from like 20 cues to like two Q, so pretty pretty wide range of players there. And I usually wind up having to raise its rank by a five, say, ranks depending on where they are. Because especially towards the lower end, you kinda can beat the thing just by getting it into a Jiseki problem. Uh, for example, if you approach 4-4, your opponent pincers you, you dive into the 3-3, 
You probably know, having studied Jiseki, that if you block, you do not Hane lest you wind up in a great deal of trouble. Crazy Stone, on the other hand, seems to love doing it, so if you know the obvious counter to why we don't typically Hane and how you can just drop down and go back and cut, then you get yourself an early lead, and it's kind of hard to lose from there. So in that regard, it's really difficult to get a handle on like where its rank correlates to. Also, I've noticed it playing a lot of Puppy Go, which just kind of tends to follow my students around the board a lot, and just play wherever uh, they want to play. Not really a big fan of that, so I don't really, I don't really have an opinion on its Q level play. Uh, Dom level play gets into some kind of interesting conversation, but uh, at Q level, it's really hard to say. It's really hard to say. I think it makes so many errors at that level that it's less a question of, you know, what rank is this playing at, and more of a question of, oh, can I take advantage of the fact that it did this? Can I take advantage of the fact that it did that? It just kind of feels like when I have my student play it, it's a little bit like just solving uh, some Go problems rather than playing someone at a given rank, if that makes any sense. That said, again, I am not bashing the program in any way, shape, or form. I absolutely love the program. It is helping me uh, teach my students and have a conversation with my students about their game and how they should be thinking about it in a way that I just wasn't really able to before. Now, moving on, I have not been able to release a news video in about the last two months now. I do apologize for that. However, there are a lot of there have been a lot of games that have taken place since then. I obviously cannot cover all of those games right now, but I did want to give you some fascinating statistics for those of you who like hearing about those things. For example, one interesting statistic that I've been uh, exposed to now is the sheer amount of games that professionals play. And this time there's, there's a bit of a stark difference that we'll be getting into uh, very, very quickly. For example, Yama Yuta, you all know him as a Japanese player, fairly strong, I think he's currently top player in Japan, and go for go has him ranked 6th, I want to say, worldwide. So, fairly strong player, fairly strong Japanese player. Over the last two months, I've also noticed that he's only played about five games. Of those, he has won three, lost two, and you'll see why that's interesting in a second. Uh, he also, uh, unbeknownst to me, he also has a nice career win of 71%. He's a 71% career win ratio. So if you've been missing out on Yama Yuta's games, he has played five in the last two months, you might want to check them out. Now, some other people who have caught my attention, as you know, lovely Shibano Torimaru, Shibano Torimaru sorry, also a Japanese player, uh, he's played a little bit more, he's played 10 games, he's gone 5-5 five and five of those, and he's currently sitting, and I did not expect this to be so high, he's currently sitting at a nice career win of 60%. So it seems like he's sort of moving up. Other players you may want to uh, be aware of, Lee Cheng Ho, he's played his share of games lately. Those of you who've been studying since the 90s, like maybe I have, you might want to be aware of how he's doing lately. He's played his fair share. He is currently seven and six in the last two months. Pretty notable. Lee Sedol, he's also been playing uh, a little bit, not quite as much as I would have thought. He is currently sitting at 7 and 4. However, uh, Shinjin So, someone who I expect to rise up through the ranks and become a 9 down hopefully fairly soon, he is currently 7 and 3 in the last two months, and he also has a 60.5 career win ratio. Now, him being 7-3, it should uh, be noted that he has played such strong opponents such as Cho Chi Kun lately. There's a lot of interesting games in his past, in his recent games history, and I suggest if you get the opportunity, links to many of these games are down in the description uh, below. Go ahead and check those out. Now, from this, you can kind of see why I was surprised that Iyama Yuta has only played five games in the last two months. Because, as we mentioned, Shibano has played 10, Li Cheng Ho has played more, Yi Se Dol has played more, Shin Jin So has played more, like, it seems like the top players all around are usually just playing more games. But, oh my god! 
Keji. He is currently 11 and 6. In the past two months, he's played 17 games that I'm aware of. Maybe he's played more, I don't know. And he's playing Chinese Nine Dons, he's playing Korean Nine Dons, he's playing at everything and he's still commanding a nice healthy 11 and 6 ratio yeah it's under 50 percent which is a little bit sad however it does bear noting that he does enjoy a nice career win ratio of 70.3 percent so not doing the greatest nowadays but then again, I mean, what's the reason for that? Is he actually slipping? Is he just completely overwhelmed by the sheer amount of games that he has to play? I mean, he played 17 games in the last two months, whereas other players have not. Shinjin So only had to play 10. Iyama Yuta, and over there in Japan, only played 5. I mean, 17 seems like a lot. Another notable player who's been completely on fire lately is Park Jung-Wan, who's enjoying a nice 10 and 4 ratio within the last two months. That is absolutely crazy. He seems to be playing uh, just phenomenal go right now and just beating the crap out of everyone he's playing against. However, it does bear noting that it doesn't seem like he's playing as strong players as, let's say, uh, Keji has been playing, for example. A lot less 9 downs in his lineup. But that's cool too, because I like to see, you know, games where there's a, a bit of a disparity of rank, because I like learning from those games to see, you know, where someone's going wrong. So maybe I can avoid that in my games. So I'm definitely going to be going and paying attention again to Park's games to see if maybe there's some more basic lessons that can be applied there, and if so, maybe we can do some lectures on them. That'd be kind of cool. Now, in the interest and in full disclosure, I do have to admit there are a lot more top players in the world than the ones that I mentioned, and some of the ones that I mentioned aren't even top players as of yet. Some of them aren't even on the top 10. Though, some are pushing, like Shinjin So is currently ranked 12. He's so close to being on the top 10. Dude, just get your bloody 9 done already. Seriously, stop being lazy. Though... If he keeps up the nice ratio that he's currently staring at, he'll be there. And in fact, it bears noting, it bears noting before I forget, that he's even actually gone up to 8 Don, so he is on his way. He's gone from 6 to 8. So shortly, he will also be a 9 Don. But yeah, obviously I can't talk about them all, obviously I can't go through them all, so this is where you probably want to start typing in the description down below some of your favorite players, so I can check out how they're doing and maybe bring you updates on them as well. And that of course brings me back to some of my own announcements. As you know, it is October, which means what am I going to be doing for October? Remember, uh, last year I had a few special goings-ons. For October, I had uh, zombie go month which will be making a repeat hopefully every Wednesday for our lectures this month we will be going over games in which dead stones come back to life to haunt the players that is one thing that I intend to do I'm also going to be purchasing I think tonight a brand new video camera for my real board series so those of you who have been anxiously waiting for this return or you know just somewhat curious uh, you should know that I am going to be bringing that back fairly shortly, hopefully in better quality, because, of course, I was never really happy with how my the other camera that I got was really performing, and even with, like, extra lighting and trying to clean up the image. Eh, it's kind of not so cool. Hopefully now we can get on top of that and give you a nice clean image to look at. Of course, October is not going to be the only month that's going to be interesting. We're actually having uh, quite a bit of in interesting things that are going to be popping up as the year ends, let's just say. But we'll go into all of that fine goodness at a much later date. On that note, I think that's where I'm going to end today's news video, and I will of course be seeing you at the end of this month to bring you another update of some of the more interesting goings-ons in the Go world. Hope you tune in, hope you enjoy the series, let me know if you do or don't, and how I could make it better if you are unsatisfied. On that note, I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.